And TA is really good against Puck, so what does VP do? They put Magnus mid. Scandal's playing Mag and they're putting Puck off lane. Well, we'll have to see how this goes. I mean, we can sneak into Sassons. They're staring down the barrel of a 2-0 deficit here. Losing their first map, essentially, in the Dota Pit League Season 2 ticket. Of course, we do have a big prize tool going the way of the winner of this one. But it can be increased with the Dota ticket. It's in the Dota stories. Go ahead and check it out. Of course, we are here on Twitch.tv slash Dota Pit as well, if you're interested. And uh, we are going to jump into the game. So we've got some time here. I mean, again, this is Medusa. This could be a long one as we're waiting to get underway here. Our second game of the day. But uh, I'm excited, man. This is, this is a damn This is draft. absolutely ridiculous. Definitely a breath of fresh air into the into the meta game whenever there's a new patch because the teams are trying to figure out strategies, and you see here's that you haven't seen in a long time. I mean, like this is just this is godlike in a nutshell. I think so. Yep. It's exciting. And even style this game is picking heroes that they don't normally pick, like Rubik, anti TA, Anti Mage. Yeah. Those are heroes that you don't see too often. Ancient Would Apparition you? comes up every once in a while, and Brewmaster is a consistent ban or pick hero. We're getting uh, to that point in 6.8 to be where everything's starting to get shifted around here. And if there's one person that's going to make sure that the metagame is shifted, it's going to be the uh, the great draft himself. It's going to be godlike. But one thing I want to talk about is this is an offlane brewmaster, which I think you discussed in the draft. But this is something you don't see too often for Ix and Mike88. This is not one of his go-to heroes. Maybe you'll see a boy, maybe you'll see a centaur, or a tidehunter. Um, you know, a couple other heroes in the pool, but Brewmaster is certainly not one that I see too often. He, I've seen him play it a bunch. Should not not one. necessarily in matches. In matches, it's almost always TC taking up the Brewmaster, mm -hmm. but he does practice it in his own in house league. The ICL. Meanwhile, VP so. ran five heroes to bottom lane at the start of the game just so they can block the Radiant Jungle and make it a lot more difficult for Nyx to get their pulls off. And Nyx, if you look at the heroes, they don't have sentries. They got boots on Wipeyard this game. So they can try to initiate on Puck. Oh. Good positioning from Wipeyard getting that deny on the nice Illusion Run bottom. That's just a smart little play that comes out. Where they're running two heroes, they might send the bottom. They have to use the top of the then. They did this last game, I think, for at least a little bit. They just kind of sent the heroes towards the off lane. Just kept them there, but this is going to be... They want to put pressure on us, and I think if they can get some kills, they can certainly just start a ball out of control. But again, this is going to be a game where we're going to see probably 20 to 30 minutes without, you know, any huge plays or, you know, any ridiculous tier 2 characters. I I'm not going to say that after the last game. Last game started getting crazy and I thought it was still going to be farming for a little while. Yeah, that's true. Something we'll have to keep our eyes on, but... I, I don't know, I just feel like, especially with a, a, an anti mage in this game, it could take a while for things to get going. However, with that being said, some introductions going underway. Convertis Pro Polar, the winners of the first game. DK Flood was playing the buck, the farming hero in this lane. Goblike on the Ogre Magi. Lilith will be on the Shadow Demon. Mid lane is going to be Scandal playing your Magnus, so... Uh, a bit different than what we thought. TC getting harassed down by Scandal as well. Top lane is going to be Ilden again on the Medusa. I seem like your off lane Brewmaster for Snom. We'll see TC me on your Templar Assassin. Roy Beard on your Olympic Roaming Force in mid lane. Fluff on your Ancient Apparition and Ush is playing your Anti Mage. So they're actually doing really well on this lane down bottom. They really can't get close for sneaking Nyx Assassin because they can't get any farm. Roy Beard's going to roam on Scandal. He has Telekinesis. Can't get in range to pop it just yet. He doesn't have to speed, so we will catch up to Scandal here. Right breaking down a bit, but not going for the kill. So just rasping that away. I mean, sneaking Nyx Assassin said, okay, we can't do anything bottom. So we're going to send a Rubik roaming around. He's going to put pressure on the Medusa, so Medusa isn't free farming at the same time. And Wiper's going to head top. Golden is, uh, well, he's going to be wrapped on currently. He does have his ward though, so he knows this is happening. He's going to walk right into the right, right into white beard. Right quick some months, but white beard not taking that much damage, and he just backs away. And he's going to get in. He does have Slap, but it's only level 1, however. Bouncing right now, pick up for Lil. He's going to walk to the high ground. We're going to fluff up and see him clearly. Lil is just going to maybe throw up his disruption if he wants to. We're just going to zone him back out. So, this is the problem now for Nyx Assassin. They're not getting any farm on us in this bottom lane, like at all. They're starting to get farm for Ix Mike in the top lane, but they really are going to try to shut down Medusa, and I think that's important. And Illidan, if they can bring him down in this game, they can certainly get a victory here. And TC, I think, is going to be the biggest factor coming out for Nyx Assassin. If you can get involved in a lot of kills early, then all of a sudden this game becomes a bit more difficult for Virtus Pro Polar, whereas they are already pretty much winning every lane. Down bottom though, Ush getting caught out, they're going to use the Illusory Orb, Godlike already fire blasted. Easy blink for Ush though, 
Level two, he's not gonna get caught up. There was no disruption for level, so he wasn't even there at the time. You know, Whitebeard is sitting top, trading extremely aggressively on Illidan. Yeah, this is very scary. Buff is actually coming in as well. Whitebeard maybe could have gotten that kill yet, telekinesis up in one second, but Illidan backs away. And Illidan realizing knew, they have he, this ward. He knew exactly where Fluff was, because when Fluff was over on the top rune area, Creeps gave vision of him and he got pinged out by Lil. So they knew that Fluff was rotating up, and he knew he could sit there and trade until he saw him in the Observer Ward. And this is what they need to do, I think, against British Pro Polar. I mean, the Illidan's already going back home right now, which is very important. Again, you can always get back into the game if you do so. You have that farming ability, but... This is what they, I think they should have done from the, from the word go. And now they're starting to be aggressive a bit more. But this, this leaves us in the bottom line getting not much. He has five last hits, so that's more than maybe you expect, but... It's still pretty bad. Mm, it's, a, it's a hard game for the anti mage right now. Not as hard for the Medusa. Because he at least got... The first couple of waves. This reminds me of a game where um, Navi was playing against Shadows in the past, where sneaking and flying anti mage, he got literally no farm. He had two deaths in 20 last hits at the 20 minute mark, or some or 10 minute mark rather, and he still was able to carry the game at about 30 minutes in just by getting a battle through from sheer willpower alone. So, I mean, for us, it's just don't die since it is bottom lane, and maybe someday it'll be your battle fury. Now, Snod doesn't know what to do with their supports. They send them top, and then VP supports rotated up there. They send them... They're starting to send Whitebeard back to bottom lane right now, but VP is gonna see this, and they'll probably send their supports back down to Puck. Their cores in top and bottom are actually able to get stuff when their supports are gone, whereas Brewmaster isn't able to get too much alone other than experience, and Anti-Mage is the same thing. Not getting too many creep kills. Meanwhile, the support levels... If you look at the EXP per minute, it's absolutely terrible for Sun. Their supports wow. are getting very under leveled, which is going to play a huge factor in the mid game. In the early, first couple of fights, it's going to be very hard for Sun. Plus level one, man. Like at this point, this is looking real bad for Beacon Ace Assassin. It's just a support level alone. And on top of that, it's not like the players are getting that much farm. Their cores in the, in the mid area, rather bottom than top lane. He's getting a decent amount, um, but. In comparison, I don't know. But this is oh, Fireblast Fire coming in, Whitebeard getting caught out. Bobos is gonna throw his own zero best for all. Faithful is gonna fly, but that's first blood for Godlack. Cold Feet will connect at Godlack. He's getting low, but that's not gonna last him there for much longer. Blink forward, they want this kill. He's literally been taking his hero alive. He's got eight armor and he's tangling up, but here comes TC to secure the kill. And uh, he is literally not unkillable. He will go down to fluff, and that actually gonna, that's gonna get him a lot at least. He's gonna get him up to level two, almost level three. And that actually gets some more gold going for us as well, which is very important early on in this game. Top lane Ike's Mike manned up into Illidan. They just kind of whacked each other for a little while. And then Ike's Mike ran away. Standard Ike's Mike play coming out of that Brewmaster. He's sitting here, he's farming up. He's very low, he gets hit up with a snake, and he actually has to go back home. He's gonna salve, actually. Just kidding. He doesn't need to go back home. He also has a bottle as well, so... He'll try to get his blink next because he doesn't need to go for Arcanes, because he has that bottle, but... They're gonna try to go for a kill to stop him in the but he's gonna back up. And they have wars in this jungle, and there's a troop rip right now, and I can make sure that sure Buff doesn't get spotted here, but I think they have a feeling that he's, he's probably somewhere in, in the vicinity. You know, while Anti-Mage gets disrupted on bottom lane, gets silenced afterwards, but it was just a little, little bit of a harass. Uh, Ush this game did not skill Mana Break at all yet, because of those images coming out from Shadow Demon. If you skill it up and you get silenced after disruption, you could be completely oomed and dead because you can't blink away. Yeah, that's actually fine, uh, I think. So. Usually you'll see anti-mages get a magic stick. I say usually, but you don't really see anti-mages and anti-mages against Shadow Demon at that. But you can get a magic stick, so you can get your mana back after you burn it off yourself. And you save a point to skill into mana break whenever you go for a kill. Which he did not do either. He put his extra point to his stats. Oh boy, got black. Oh, they didn't spot him. They're looking for Illidan, and he's gonna use his Mystic Snake. There's the Chilling Touch. Whitebeard gets obliterated by that one hit of the Mystic Snake. Cold Feet went through, didn't do anything there. There's the Fireblast on Fluff. He's about to fall. Mike getting chased down by the Medusa. Fluff about to go down. Just the right clicks alone of God Black. He will fall. Meanwhile, there's a Skewer coming through. RP as well. Disruption. No! Oh, Mike. He will get away. Virtus Pro Polar with the misplay there. RP. 
into the disruption. You try to skewer afterwards. The miscommunication from British Pro Bowler. They, Polar, but, they wouldn't uh, have gotten that kill regardless. RP doesn't last long enough for them to finish him off, but they would have forced out the Brewmaster ult, which is important by itself. And they don't do either in that situation. They don't get the kill, they just force up the ult. And Ice Mike saves in the top lane. He gets more gold, he's up to a thousand now, so. Rotation back mid towards TC. He's probably fine. He actually has a decent amount of farm. Break band, bottle, phase boots. Got two GG branches, which will probably turn into a wand here in just a moment. 38 last hits. Second most of the game behind. Bobo is sitting at 43 with free farm in the bottom lane. They'll have a pretty early blink. Regen is going to be picked by Scandal. He'll have RP in 68 seconds. So. Again, it's just trying to create space for Invertus Pro Polar to get some items up on their course, especially the dude, so he's going to be going for the three yet again. Uh, Ancient Mage is sitting on, it seems to be, uh, he actually just has 450 gold in the bank. He's got a coin blade, Rune of Health, and Warman Shield, so he can't even get in the lane right now. That's a problem. Uh, Goblet's skill build is something to watch this game. Right now, he's level 4 with 2 points in his Fire Blast and Ignite. Um, got to wait and see when he starts taking points in Bloodlust. He might start doing it at 8, 9, 10, and 12. Get his 4 points in Bloodlust, buff Medusa. Uh, that would be the the choice I would make here because they're really, really trying to buff up this Medusa with those hero picks. Yeah, and you don't get too much out of fire, or not fire, let's ignite later on in the game. Just for the early GG, is really nice here and just the damage over time, but... Yeah, 2 points is good. I wouldn't put... More than that in it, though. Well, Unless he starts getting crazy amounts of levels soon. Which could happen theoretically. I mean, you get a big RP coming through. I mean, they're trying to go on TC right now. Disrupt is going to fly. Soul Catch is going to go as well. It looks like it's connected on the creep, unfortunately. TC, he's going to get fire blasted. He's going to get ignited as well. He's going to melt strike. They will use the uh, big RP coming up from Scandal. And TC does fall. Almost going to be killing Goblock, however, though. At least turning that around as well. Nice, nice little play there just to get that kill. They, of course, with Soul Kitchen, they probably get that kill guard out of him. I'm not sure, but at least they lock him down and they bring him down, so. Good levels for their supports getting the kill on them solo mid. God, Fluff can't buy a level right now. He's level 3 still. Yep, the supports and stun need to get a kill somehow. But I don't see them killing the Medusa. I don't see them killing the Magnus. And I definitely don't see them killing the Puck unless he farms with Illusory Orb. I don't think he's been killing doing. Goblack. I mean, he's got 8 armor, he's got 1,000 health at level that's 5. Yeah, that's he's true. actually tanky as hell. Yep. It's, it's a hard life for the Snow supports right now because of their landing decisions of, oh, we wow. can't land here, let's run around. That disruption actually saves him from the side trap. Odin is going to get brought down with the telekinesis, but still it doesn't matter. Buyback coming in, or no, I just heard the sound for whatever reason. Cycling up, that'll be on Yoker. He's going to just get up in the air. Odin still very tanky with the mana shield. Skewer through. Skill does not have RP, but Mike does not have his ultimate anymore. Lil's getting brought low, but it doesn't matter. There's going to be troops for on to two. TC going down as well. He falls to the shockwave. Wipe here in one right click. Phobos has his illusion orb in one second here, and he might go down. No, he stays alive. And they will trade two for one effectively. Scandal TT's back home. Nice fight going the way of British Pro Polar. And again, they're starting to lead the way here. In fact, they go bottom. Scandal trying to fight up against us. He's just trying to sit and farm for his life, but he can't get anything done this bottom lane. Yeah, they don't want him to let us have anything. He's been getting some farm in the jungle, but it's not much. Nyx was, is in a position where they had to try to force something and try to get a kill. Panda ult is their best utility for trying to team fight and get kills, and they just don't have the damage. It's not there for them, their supports are too underleveled, they don't get enough out of their panda, or he can't do enough by himself, I should say. And Vipu's able to counter that and take a good fight, killing off two of the cores of Sna. Oh, that's a career that they just made a kill. No, they just said walk past it, they want to get a kill on a hero, they're going to try and flood that position. As if this game wasn't hard enough for him, he gets blocked and trapped and they grab the kill. Lil's gonna get cold speed if that doesn't really matter. They did an aggressive smoke to put pressure on Anti-Mage and get wards into the Radiant Jungle so they can keep playing aggressively and they just happen to find Fluff and stuff at the same time. Ush just actually... blinked. Yeah, he uh, disruption's have disruption cool though. Little, yeah, he's, he's alive. Yeah, so he's gonna stay alive. They can't get the fireball itself or not in range, but they're gonna press this through in tower. They're doing such a good job of creating space for pretty much every hero on the map for Fred's Pro Polar. I mean, even though Illidan is forming a jungle currently, now that he's his first green, that's not really an issue anymore. He doesn't have a shot yet, obviously, like the last game, but still. 
This is getting very, very difficult for Star very quickly. Yes. They got out strategized this game heavily in the early game by Goblock and VPP. And now that's a blink dagger at 12 minutes in for, uh, for mid lane scan, actually. He's not, he's not all playing, not that it matters. I mean, there's already a blink on the clock anyway, so. Really isn't much of a difference there. Yep. It's actually kind of ridiculous. 75 last hits now for Medusa, so still getting back into it. Not quite what it was at earlier, but still pretty good. Um, they have the highest net worth right now, the top three anyways, and TC, his involvement has been pretty minimal. I mean, that early team fight that you saw a minute ago really didn't pay off. They do have a, a, an ancient stack going, and he's going to maybe try to take this, but I don't know how much that's going to give him in terms of net worth and actual usefulness in these fights. It just feels like right now, Nick's assassins are losing pretty much every single one of their lanes, and they don't have that late game carry to get them back into it. Not, not at least right now, because Medusa's also got that late game carry potential, and Illidan's getting up there, so... They don't really have the greatest pickoff potential. They almost have a blink on, or they do have gold for the blink now on Ike's Mike. And Fluff is getting close to level 6. That'll help them out a bit. That's a real bottom lane. Skewer as well. Soul Catcher, he's gonna try to blink, but there's the Fire Blast. Nicely played. Easily done coming up from British for Polar, so. One RP, one kill. Good trade coming out from British Pro in Scandal. There's so. more than enough pick, pick off potential on DPP, but uh, Nyx can't really get anything going for themselves right now. No, they really can't. I, I mean, they're just going to keep us shut down, and they're going to keep Illidan and Harvey top lane, and then we'll just see a repeat of what happened in the last game, except to a much greater extent. You're not going to have any items for Nyx Assassins. You're not going to need to get a rip here for Medusa, I don't think. At least not, not as early as they did in the previous game, which wasn't really that early at all, but... And Ike's Mike is really the only hero that can do anything at this point, and that's not much. And you talked about how they need other heroes to help him with that. There's no farm for white gear for him to do any damage. They're not even close to using that person's ice blast. Actually, he is level five now, which is they've given him some room for experience. But it just feels like British Pro Polar are in a situation where they're just out farming and out playing and sneaking his assassins every turn. And TC on the TA is going for a Yasha right now. So he's not trying to get a blink or BKB or something to fight early with. So he's going to have problems living in these fights. And I think with Rick for Bowler, they can just play aggressively for the next couple of minutes because they are they are ahead by a bit. I'm not sure by how much, but it seems to be 5,000 net worth for Rick for Experience-wise, it's about 4,000 as well, so they have this lead going their way. And... I don't really know what to do if, here. If if you're Sna, your plan is to farm up on your heroes as much as you can, and hope that VP throws. That's kind of what it happening. what it's at with how behind they are right now. I mean, if they do mess up in one fight, VPP, they'll give a lot back to Sna and put them right back in the game. Mm. Absolutely, that's the crazy thing with this patch. Although it was changed, obviously we talked that about that a bit earlier, but. That's still, still, there's, there's a, good a good chance, chance that this, this changes him. And... It's not like they're behind too far on things other than experience. They do have 6 now on Fluff, which helps out a lot, but their Maybe Rubik is still only level 4. Rubik is actually closer to Blink than he is to level 6. How crazy is that? That's actually from the absurd. passive gold gain. But that actually, but without uh, level 6, that doesn't give you that much. I mean, you even have to Blink in size, but... <laughs> The snuff stack is getting ganked by VPP. That hurts. Now they're gonna smoke up. Looking for Illidan. Uh, he has his six shield on, so he's gonna pop that up. And VP are saying, okay, well, we have this tower we can take, or we just go back and, and Illidan's probably gonna be ganked. We need to help him. Blink clap, split going through. Us gonna try to fight on him, and he's gonna try to mana burn him down as much as possible. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast will connect, but big RP on to three. Blink four, there's gonna be a waiting map. Now Fobo is still going to work. TC getting low, they pop the invis. They bring down the Medusa, but how much is that going to really affect? Shockwave missed on TC, he pops the invis room. He's still alive, they're looking for more. Ix Mike 88 is gonna get out, they have no skewer coming through. And a two for one trade, Dust goes, they can't connect to anybody. They lose Medusa, that's nice. They can't get anything else other than those two heroes, those two supports coming up from Sana, so. Yeah, that fight actually went pretty well for Sana. They have to commit everything if they want to kill. So they can't fight when DP TPs in reinforcements. That Invis rune saving TC is what made that fight good for them. They were able to kill off a core, and they only lost their two supports that are under leveled anyway. Mm -hmm. Under leveled, under farmed. 
Well played coming out from Virtus Pro Polo, but at the same time, this is getting a pretty big kill there. Uh, TC saves a lot and runs away from TC's out. And for now, it's just back to Karma for us and the rest of the team getting success. Squad is way more of perseverance, getting closer and closer to that battle carrier, which is going to be about 20 minutes in, but at least it's something. Will's getting chased down, Ice Blast is going to go, and that actually just kills him. <laughs> that the Ice Blast right quick from Old Strike, just too much damage. Phobos is going to jaunt away. His blink wasn't ready to go, but he's going to get out now. Less. Got like the top lane. He's going to fire blast. Mike, Mike is going to have a split. Gobbles going to use blood loss on himself, and he's just going to walk out. And I think you're right. This is the build that he's going for. He's going to get uh, blood loss in the next couple of levels here. Meanwhile, Pope was really doing well. They grab the kill on White Beard. Scandal gets a kill on the bottom lane on all issues of the RP, I imagine. No, nope. it's that sound cooldown. They just used the skewer and shockwave and power from Ilden. Yeah, they had Ush just blinks in and men fights with Illidan, and he gets skewered, can't blink during it, and just dies to magic damage, and right clicks from Illidan. The principal thing too is that you don't get that much damage because you do have Empower now on your Medusa, and it actually gives you so much. I mean, he's 103 plus 18 split shot on him, which is pretty nice, so... Radiance bottom tower. Mm -hmm. ridiculous. Medusa's item bolt might change a little bit this game because he does need to get an MKB for Fire later on against Panda. Drunken mm -hmm. Haze and Drunken Brawler are gonna be pretty annoying to deal with, so. Well, oh. we'll have to see how things go here. Another smoke from Sna, trying to fight around every time Panda ult is up, which it is right now. Uh, Ike's Mike on Panda just bought a Sobe mask, or Sage's mask rather, so he's gonna be working towards a Vlad. He's ready to go. He jumps in. There's the split coming in. Mystic Snake. Not used. Oh, uh, they're in trouble. The Ice Blast doesn't connect in terms of actual damage, but they can get it off. But big RP! Looks like it's on to four. What can they do with this scandal? Going to work. Fluff gets brought low as well. Beautiful RP. TC's is going to get brought down on top of it all. Big fight. Scandal with the RP. Going to work. Ice Mike now going to get brought low as well. All the while, Ice is farming bottom, but it doesn't matter. They're going to lose the fourth hero. He's going to fall. Ice Mike getting a shockwave down. Scandal triple kill. Magnus is real. Meanwhile, Bobos is going into the Ush, and they almost got a fifth kill there. Oh, what a huge fight. I'm going the way of DP4, and they are just making Snot work for this game. They are so far down right now after that engagement. My god. Yeah, they didn't have the damage to bring down Illidan. Goblik was sitting there protecting him, and he actually stunned the TA as TA was running up to put a multi strike into Illidan. Delaying that made it so there's absolutely no way Medusa was gonna die. No. Looking at it right now. 20 minutes in. What do you do in this situation here? If you're sneaking into assassins. You talked about having uh, them sit back and then farm up and then just trying to fight around, especially with the Blue Master Ultimate, but. They're trying to smoke up, they're trying to find kills, and it's really not working out for them, it's just they're getting further and further behind, and then stuff like this happens. I don't even know if you need the stream ball there, Bobos. I don't know if you needed that, but... I mean, I guess it's fine to get the kill anyways. Yeah, so, in this situation, what do you do here? The map's pretty dark for Sna. They almost have their blink on Rubik, which is nice, but... Even if he steals RP, they don't have the damage. He just... They, yeah. Their anti-mage needs to have, like... Manta already on top of the battle fear he just finished, but he doesn't. It's just hard game. Hope your t uh, enemies throw. Right now, it's not so like they are. They're in play very well. Virtus Pro Polar seems to be thriving, especially on the Schlesenberg server. 4 to 16. And. I don't know. I mean, at some point in time, you're going to have to make a decision. I'm you can keep trying to smoke here, but I think they just want us to get more from He does have his battle free now, so that is at least a good sign. And this is maybe where it's a bit easier. They also have the blink on Rubik like you talked about. Again, still steal, how important is it going to be in this game though? We'll have to find out. RP is the biggest spell probably in the game to steal at this point. Uh, at least during a team fight, so. Yeah, it's yeah, BKB done also with Smackers too. So, I mean, I mean, they're ready to play. I don't know if they need that BKB either. It's not like he's really getting caught out with, you know, the way his RP has been going, so. Comes out of position here for Seasoning Assassins and British Pro Bowler are ready to fight. They're going to try to push into this mid lane. TC is going to be pinged on here. Lil's looking for initiation, he can't find it. And uh, he actually doesn't have any more ability out. He only has his strength and boots, obviously. And, well, now the tower's going to be a pressure. They're actually just using Ilden as a uh, pushing source here. He's going to come through and try to fight with them because Yasha is going to be done here. 
a bit of alacrity put on him currently. We just actually need to be in the belt just to finish that off. And he's gonna go to town. I mean, he's got a power. He's got a ton of damage. He also has bloodlust as well. So, and they've got four points into disruption for him. Blink, silence, Grim Carl, Ix, Mike, can they bring him low enough? BKB, RP on to two! Whitebeard's gonna fall as well, collateral damage. A loser over stolen right before he died, so he just says, hey, at least I got something out of that, but no, not so much. They take two in tower. And instead of going for two, they decide to port Illidan bottom so Anti-Mage can't take a tower. They want to gold starve Nyx Assassins completely and not give them anything on the map. It's actually just awful for us. He can't do anything in this game, it feels like. He's just like, oh guys, let me get something out of that. He has to go to the enemy team ancients, which is sad. Nicely for him, but they, I, I don't know if they know that he's there. Not that it matters at this point. Check Lurch. Lose your RPCs. AM. Yeah. No. Nope. Fulgus just walks away. Looks like he's going to Nighttime vision. Yeah, the nighttime vision actually helping us survive in that situation. He's uh, sitting here without a TT scroll, so this is going to put pressure on him. Tier 2 top and Tier 2 bottom tower. Lulz here with He's Medusa. going for the courier kill right now. I'm not sure. Maybe? Nope. Uh oh. Uh, little disruption. Go catcher, no, can't follow up poison, though. and not enough. He had plenty of medic as well, Blink, so. Gem up on DK Phobos to just further cripple Sneaky Nick's assassins. Oh god, like, no. He's gonna have to RP? Yeah. RP now down. Ice Blast is gonna go. Scanlon gets stunned up. Goblin gets hit up by that as well, but he's DK He's gonna try to TP out. He's already pretty low. And Phobos will get a kill down in the mid lane. That'll be on the anti mage. Meanwhile, there's the destruction of TC coming in. He's gonna try to TT out Demonic Verge. And they can't stop him from really, so he, he makes that alive. And actually, Scandal survives back in the well. His BKB helping him out enough there to stay alive against that ancient after a nice blast. All the meanwhile, Illidan is in the bottom, and every single lane is just getting absolutely destroyed for Sneaky Nick's assassins. And they're losing Tier 2 Tower down bottom. It's ridiculous. Their, their heroes just couldn't do anything about that either. They were committing heroes to mid after they lost Ash. They were trying to fight that. They were trying to farm up top and Ike's Mike uses ult up there so he can TP. They don't have a, a hero that can stand and do one against Medusa really. And feel safe knowing that there's two blinks on BPP. Oh my god. This is just ridiculous for them now. It just, it just feels, feels like, like your heroes, heroes can't do anything period. Period. Your heroes couldn't do anything in that situation. They can't do anything period now, man. There's only four kills across the map coming out for Sneaky Enix Assassins. The Mantis style is now done for Illidan's Storm Rage. And there's, I think, no split for another, yeah, 40 seconds or so. They don't need to get Lurch on, although they could. They're taking the last two through in the mid lane. And all of a sudden, the pressure is now on Sneaky Enix Assassins to get something done. But it just feels like every fight that they're in, they can't get anything going. They can't get the jump on British Propolar, and they're going to take another tower here on the back end. It's pretty big aggression, so. BKB is finished on TC, which is nice, but they still have RP that goes through that on BPP side. Yeah. And the right click ability as well, that's the thing too. It's just like, well, I mean, how much is that BKB going to do for you? Especially if he gets RP, they can get that pretty much entire combo off before he gets his BKB off, so. Oh, oh, uh, sh Fire Blast, there it goes, multicast the three times, the skewer, they will bring him down. They had to work for that one, but they do get it. They're actually going to chase after Illidan, Mantis Tal is going to go. Soul Catcher is going to fly, they're going to go with, of course, Medusa. Now the Primal Split's going to go, maybe they can bring down Illidan here, this could be big. He did pop his Mantis on the Split Shot as well. Still getting chased down, Cyclone on Lilith. Dreamcrawl on the backside, that'll actually be on Whitebeard. Looks like he might get brought low and will get brought down in the back end. Illidan is going to fall though to TC, finally getting involved. He gets a kill, a huge one, that a double kill for TC. He's doing some work. DK Pomos though on the backside gets a double kill. Skewer back out of TC. He's getting brought out. There's going to be the Melstrike doing some work. The Goblin comes in. Fire Blast Ignite going in as well. Skewer. He's got the Aaron on top from winning. Rip TC about to fall and will triple kill for Phobos. They might lose everybody. The split already called. There's GG. 0 oh, 2 coming out for Sneaky Nick's Assassins in the first game, the first day of Dota Pit Season 2. And Virtus Pro Polar on the back end of a fantastic Medusa pick. And a great draft from Goblack. Go up 2 0 to take the series nicely. And they win their first map. Yeah, the first game, Sneaky Nick's Assassins did the same picks that they did in 6.81, pretty much. They didn't really change anything. 
and VPP has been practicing a lot and Goblack the Master of Drafting.